like a Hollywood story, this, you know, and if they wrote it, nobody believed it. A club that was pretty much going out of business, he came in, he told everyone what he was going to do. Uh, I think a lot of people raised their eyes and thought, here we go again, one of these chairmen who's promising the world, and he actually did it. We're going to have that in, are in the Premiership! The wild celebrations take place down on the touchline! It's all over! Without Dave Whelan's input into the club, would they still be fourth division or maybe, maybe in the evening of conference? Get in! What a yeah! yeah! Oh! Goal for Wigan Athletic! Ben Watson is for Wigan Athletic into the lead! Post the ball, Raymond for Wigan Athletic! Oh! It's Manchester City nil! Wigan Athletic won! It's Wigan through and through, a genuine feeling for the town and, and he always wanted to do that. Uh, he always made decisions in football uh, based for, for the good of the, of the football club and the town and that's very rare to find in, in the modern game. So for me he's been an inspiring figure and, and I feel that he's been very important in, in my life. To come from the fourth division to the Premier League, win the cup, how can you explain that? How can you say to anybody, this is how I felt on the day? impossible for me to tell you how proud I was when we did that and how proud I am every time I see Wigan Athletic come out on a football field. You know obviously that was there at the beginning and you know when somebody comes in and makes the statements Dave was making you have to be a brave man which obviously he is in, in business and, and, in, and in football but every promise he made came true. And he came and introduced himself and we all sat there very we weren't in the best of form and in the best position. We were a team in which basically, let's be honest, struggling. You know, a club that was struggling just to survive. And we all sat there very nervous. And he said, OK, lads, uh, nice to meet you all. And then he went on to tell us where he was going to take the club. But the bad news is maybe not all of you will be here, but work hard and let's see where this takes us. I was told I was off to Spain one day. I'd like to go and watch Roberto play. And Isidro played that day. And then I came back with tapes of Jesus playing and a week after they were brought into the club and the deal was done. When I arrived there was a young boy at 21 and I sat down with Mr Woolen and he said straight away you're going to sign for a club that is going to get into the Premier League, we're going to go and move into a new stadium, a 20,000 old seater and I don't know why, it's a feeling, I believe him. And, and I think sometimes people do forget the story in the beginning, and the beginning was, uh, you know, obviously a difficult time. I remember the defeat we lost 5 1 at Wrexham away in the broken windscreens or whatever it was called, the auto windscreens. And he spoke to the players the, the day after and said he was sticking with the manager. And if you didn't want to play for him, leave your boots there and uh, he'll pay you up. Which sent out a, a message to the players that he was going to stick with me. And as we walked out, he just said quietly to me, Make sure this year we stay up. This was in November. And he says, this time of Christmas next year, I want us to be in the top six, otherwise you won't be here. The following year we went in the top six, we were top of the league and clear by 10 points. We're going to have attacking with numbers now. Alan Mahon storming down the centre, he's got Jason Roberts, he's onside. Jason Roberts from fourth, skips inside. Kenny's on his backside. And Jason Roberts, cheekily, ships the ball into the back of the net. It's two for Roberts, it's two for Ellington, it's four for Wigan, and it's top of the table for the mighty Latix this evening. You've got two strikers there. I mean, imagine what they were valued. If they were playing in the Championship right now, Nate Barnes and Jason Morris, they'd be worth 30 million between the pair. That's how good they were. They each scored 25 goals, I think, in the season. And then it wasn't just that much to them. We had Bainsey at the back, who was only 17 at the time. Matt Jackson, as you said, Ariane, Jimmy in the middle, Lee McCulloch on the left, Teeley on the right. It was a great team on paper. And you don't realise that how lucky you are at the time. The show of emotion for both players and fans as the door to top flight football is finally opened. Dave Whelan's promises of the Premiership made tongue in cheek 10 years ago have now been fulfilled. With the players, the staff, from the doctors, the training staff, the physios, the secretary, Brenda, we've got a wonderful feeling in the football club. And I'm really, really looking forward to next season. My dad's been a lot of fans since he was like 11, 65, and 
I know now he'll be in tears up there because he just he just didn't dream of anything like this happening. It's unbelievable. Bring on Chelsea, bring on Liverpool, bring on United. A thunderous reception for Wigan Athletic and Chelsea at the JJB for the first ever Premiership match in Latics history. Wigan Athletic are in the big time. The biggest season in the club's history is underway on 102.4 Wish FM. Wigan Athletic and Manchester United finalists in the 46th League Cup final. I remember saying to him one after the cup final when we got beat by Manchester United, we was I was sat talking to him and his daughter Jane, and he was trying to tell me what I could have done different on the day. And I said to him, Chairman, with all respect, if I was owner of JJB, you would be probably bust now. And if you were in charge of our team, we'd still be in the fourth division. And he said, Fair enough, Paul. So that was the relationship we had. Doing the radio with Wish FM when they were in the Premier League. And I used to bump into Dave. You know, I can remember having a conversation with him in the reception area after one game. I said, Roberto's doing well, which he was at Swansea. And he said, yeah. He said, what do you think? I said, nothing. I think he's done great. He's obviously a good coach and that. And, you know, typical Dave clenched his fist and went, has he got that in management? I said, I'm sure he has. I said, I think he's strong enough to make the right decisions. And a few months later, he was manager. Listen to the cheer as now Gary Caldwell and Emerson Boyce lift the FA Cup for Wigan Athletic. Yeah, that was incredible to, to see so many people come out for the town. It's a, a great day and the boys will remember this for the rest of their life, I think. Let me tell you two things. One, that we are the FA Cup winners. Two, that we got a special group of players and a background staff that makes Wigan Athletic proud. And without your support, that would never happen. So we want to thank you from the heart. And all together, champion, champion. Even now, I don't think I don't think he really sunk in. Like people always ask him about it, but you know, for him, for any uh, football club, you know, to win a major trophy is a fantastic achievement. You know, you get to a certain age, and I had to step down from football. I've been in football virtually all my life. We all felt the pain and it was, it was, it was, it was a, a car crash of a season and something I never want to see this football club ever go through again. You stuck with us through thick and thin, mainly thin. For that, I want to give you something that you can be proud of this season. I want to smash this league. I don't just want to win a promotion. I want to get 100 points. Carries targets 100 points. And that is the full-time whistle from the referee Stuart Atwell. 12 months on from one of the darkest days in Wigan Athletics history when they were relegated to League One. They celebrate one of their best days as promotion back to the Skybet Championship has been secured with a 4-0 win over Blackpool. The aim is to, to be better than last year. Pre-season was better. The way we analyse games is better. The way the players are working is better. So we want to take that into games and make sure our performances are better. Where that takes us, we don't know yet. Kelly back to McCleary now, 1v1 against Tunnicliffe, crosses towards Kermigan in the centre, scores with a header, climbs over Stephen Warnock on the edge of the six-yard box, it's all too easy for Reading. Blackburn have won at Aston Villa, so that is Wigan Athletic officially relegated, of course. The chairman, you know, stoked the family, the Whelan family, put the club in a great place. You know, it's now time for us to build again. Callum Elder picks it up, tries to send it down the touchline for Jacob. Come on, Will. Walker lets it run and Will Griggs going to get on, up Will. to this. Will Griggs for a goal. Will Griggs shoots. Goal! Oh! Will Griggs! It's Wigan 1, Man City 0. And Whistle's gone. Wigan Athletic are promoted back to the Championship. They've done it in style. Shrewsbury couldn't keep pace. It's been capped with a 4-0 win at Fleetwood. Pride is the main word. My granddad was the one with the vision. I've just carried on what he asked of me to do. But to buy the club when we were at Springfield Park and the club was struggling financially, to come out with a sweeping statement like he did at the time saying we'll get to the Premier League. He's one for bold statements, but that was a very bold statement. And it happened. I've done this as a job, but it's not really a job. It's a hobby. It's my life. It's, it's everything I love is, is coming into the work every day to, to see the staff, the players different people on the stadium, different people at the training ground and yeah it's going to be a strange time but it is what it is, time to move on. I'm a bit depressed at selling the club, I've got to admit that, but I just feel at my age now, I'm 82 this next month, so I don't want to pass this club on to my family because my grandchildren, it is very very expensive these days to own a football club, 
Well, it's hurting me enormously. Um, I know it's hurting my grandson, our David. He's, he loves what I've given him to do, the job here of chairman. But the older family agree, I'm doing the right thing and stepping back. I would like to thank our supporters, every single one of them, because they've been so loyal, so kind to us, so faithful, so honest. They've followed us everywhere. All the success we've had, they've been part of it. If we've been in, getting beaten in despair, wherever we've been and whatever we've been doing, the Wigan Athletic fans are still Wigan Athletic fans to the death. So, can I just say to them all, thank you for your magnificent support and may it continue as long as you want it to continue.